<laughs> we just rock with it. Right now. <laughs> I am Stacey A. Cross, and there is no E in my name, and I couldn't wait to get up this morning because I had a powerhouse in my schedule to do this podcast with. You are watching The Comfort Killers Get Uncomfortable right now. I'm sitting with, well, I'm standing because I was like, man, I got to get uncomfortable because Jordan Sapino is in the house. And Jordan, your story is so amazing that I believe that it's going to uplift anyone that even presses play on this in any medium. When they hear your story, they're going to realize that A, they have so much to go on, like live for, right? B, yeah. that they're not doing enough, right? They're not doing enough thriving and then see, man, you're such a great motivator, motivationer and inspiration to millions. And I'm going to get in your story, but before then, welcome to the Comfort Killer Show. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. That is know, what's that, up. You already know what the deal is. It is real deal or no deal time, baby. Let's rock with it. Oh, this Come this on one's going to be fun. It. This one's going to be fun. Now, now, Jordan is the founder, owner of Concentrix Fit. Dot com, and that's a company we're going to get into it as fitness company, and I think it all starts <clears throat> here. So as your story goes, and first of all, I want to say thank you so much for your service. I know you are a veteran in the Air Force, and I want to thank you for providing me the freedom I deserve. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. So, you know, you have a rare, you had a rare, rare form of <clears throat> disease and condition. Now, let me get this right. It was acute myeloid leukemia. Yeah, yeah, yep. Now, when did you first get diagnosed with this? Well, 2011, I got diagnosed with acute myeloid leukemia. Uh, very rare. Actually, I had the first type of chromosome abnormality in the world. As you know, acute myeloid leukemia is usually found in babies and whatnot. But with everything going on in life and just things moving, you know, with global warming changing up and disease changing, I mean, it's becoming very well known <clears throat> in more adults as well. And if people don't know <clears throat> what acute myeloid leukemia is, it's, uh, it's where your blood cells, your white blood cells are meant to protect your body. When you get a cut, you get sick. What happens is it has a reverse effect and it attacks you very aggressively. So you imagine yourself, just your, your insides trying to rip you from the inside out. Mm. So, yeah. and that's the thing, we can't imagine that. So that, and, and that's what yeah. I'm saying is that we need to kind of put ourselves now in your shoes to live through your experience. And now July, 2011, when mm -hmm. I was eating ice cream in the casino, addicted. Mm -hmm. You were you were getting you were going through this this leukemia. This thing was eating inside of you. Now, what's the next step? What's this process look like? What's your mental state looking like? Well, first and foremost, you know, let's, let's say you know straight up, man. God is great. I'm here able to share this story with y'all, but y'all better get ready for it. Cause listen, I'll tell you what's going on. It's you know everything in life serves a purpose. You know everything serves a purpose. You know, Both flying in here. <laughs> everything serves a purpose to where you know I was I was on top of the world. I thought I was on top of the world. Uh, you know, I was living well, great job, uh, you know, having fun with friends, money, cars, house, whatever you name it. And this thing called adversity came into my life and had to strike me. And everything, again, serves a purpose. And, you know, uh, again, I had the girls down from California. We was out there in the Hamptons having fun for Fourth of July weekend. I'm all feeling all great. All of a sudden, I leave there. I'm feeling a little bit tired, in hot sweats, cold sweats. A week goes by. I started losing the feeling in my legs. I'm like, what's going on here? They're locking up and running like Forrest Gump. If you can picture Forrest Gump in that movie, mm. it was a great stuff. And so I constantly kept on trying to stretch it, stretch it. Finally, the pain had subdued a little bit from being bedridden for a couple of days. Went back to the gym. The moment I touched the weight, boom, all of a sudden my body just starts shaking uncontrollably. My legs start shaking uncontrollably. My mind, I start sweating profusely. And from that moment, I knew something was going on. And, uh, I basically, like, I was at the gym. They were like, yo, I think you're dehydrated. You're out there hanging out with girls. I'm like, listen, man, there's more to dehydration. I'm like, <laughs> so I called my family. There was a couple cities over, and they came running on. I said, yo, I don't know what's happening. I said, I think I might be having a heart attack. I think I might be having a, a stroke. I really don't know what neither one of them is supposed to do, but I just don't feel right. So they came rushing over. Long story made short, you know, it was, uh, they came in here, and I was I'm just excruciating pain. And I said, we got to take you to the hospital. We got to take you to the hospital. Nah, nah, I'm not going to the hospital. Mm. And, uh, I said, and the reason was, I didn't have no health insurance. As you can know, health insurance, if you don't got health insurance, it's going to rock you, man. So I'm like, no, I'm not getting put in debt because I know the ambulance ride is going to cost me like 15 Gs for just a ride down the block. I'm like, no way, no way, you know? 
I haven't. So, uh, sorry, phone's ringing over here. That's fine, man. You know, what happened is uh, I didn't go to the hospital. I stayed there. Eventually, 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 the pain just got so, so excruciating. I mean, just imagine someone peeling your, your leg, limb from limb, wow. from limb, slowly, painfully, just ripping you apart. And finally, I went to the hospital. I went to the hospital, and uh, they found it. They misdiagnosed me. They misdiagnosed me. They said, oh, I think you're anemic. I said, who's anemic? <laughs> who's a guy anemic? I don't know him. They go and say I'm anemic. They misdiagnosed me. They sent me home with a little painkiller and a little uh, uh, muscle relaxer. Yeah. Sent me on home. Three minutes go on by, and uh, I mean, three hours go by, boom, I wake up on the screw shape pain in the back of the hospital. I can go on and on, but. No, yeah, no, no. But, I, you know, because I'm, I'm taking notes because the first yeah. thing that, that you said that, that struck me was that, bro, you know, that ambulance ride is 15000 yeah. Don't even want to know what the ER is going to charge me. And, you know, 25, yeah, I'm thinking about, like, how many of us, right, is being held down. We're not even taking care of ourselves to begin with. But then we don't even want to do preventative care because of what society built as that framework. The yeah. second thing that, that you said that struck me was already you had it going on, bro. You had it going on. So as you already uh, uh, building building your muscles in the gym, you are already <laughs> this strong individual. People yeah. know you as, hey, what's going on with, with Jordan? He's already tough. He's already got the mindset of nails. So you went in this, you went in this diagnosis, and I know they misdiagnosed you, but you already went in confident. Oh, yeah. I walked into the sucker like, yo, they, you know, first when they misdiagnosed I'm like, all right, I'm going to find out what's going on. I'm going to beat the shit because – you, step, you know, like I said, I'm going to bring vengeance upon any opponent, any opponent, and you can quote me there, this is my quote, intangible or intangible. That's it. You bring, I'm going to bring vengeance upon any opponent, whether intangible or tangible, and I'm going to smash the shit out of it, baby. You already know. That's it. You know, so no, they, no, go ahead. they misdiagnosed me. So they sent me home. Three hours go by. It's like, you know, I can finally get home at like 3 o'clock in the morning. My mother, God rest her soul, she was there. She, I was her biggest hero. Uh, she was my number one fan. She was there every step of the way. So I had a little brother at the time. He leave me in a, He stayed with me at my house. Three hours go by. I called my mother. I texted her. She was up. She answered immediately. She texted. I was like five, six in the morning. She couldn't sleep. She knew something was wrong. They come rushing back over. Now at this point, I'm just in excruciating. Like I thought I was in the pain. I'm in the deepest pain you could possibly imagine. Like. Your skin is feeling like it's peeling off you. Mm -hmm. You always feel like someone's plucking it. Your heart feels like it's being ripped out. Yeah. Your arms feel like someone's, their dang of being pulled like the brave heart from limb from limb. Mm. Your body is just going through the ringer, twisting and turn and pull. And, and just, you're struck with this pain that you can't even imagine. Mm. You're a big guy. Your white blood cells, they come from the biggest bone marrow. My legs are massive. So the legs are producing, producing, and they're misfiring, they're misfiring. So it's like a gun misfiring, boom, coming right back at you. So they, my family comes over, they find me sitting in the tub. I'm sitting like I'm on a tombstone because I put myself in cold water trying to deal with the pain. I tried hot water, I tried cold water. Got me up like I was already in the tomb. They come on, we go in the hospital. I said, all right, it's time to go. And me, I never knew how to ask for help. I grew, mm. very, I grew up very poor. I never had no, my family, you know, I respect my, I love my family. They, they, they busted their ass to, to get where they needed to be and really instill that great structure of work where you work hard for what you're going to get. And I was the kid in fourth grade running around selling lollipops just to try and make a couple bucks so I can go and get a nice hat or a shirt or something, you know? Yeah. So I never knew how to ask for help. Like they came over and I'm like, come on, let me help you down the stairs. So I just did kind of like a, like a Jim Carrey, like, <laughs> yeah. I, I, I like threw I'll myself my own self down these steps. You yeah. see this. You just see this big old meatball boom, 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 hit the stairs. I'm like, come on, let me go. Yeah. I get there. Finally, they diagnose me. They're like, listen, lady walks up. They got the new, the regular uh, nurse. And now she's like, listen, Mr. Sapino, uh, you're going to be here for a while. Wow. They says, uh, it's looking like you have cancer. I said, part of my French real quick, but who the, who the F is cancer? You know, I'm trying not to cuss. Uh, yeah. Hey, they say intelligent people cuss. I like that. You know, I never used to cuss before my mother passed. And now she passed, so I'm like, yo, ma, what the fuck? Oh, you know what I'm saying? Like, yeah. <laughs> but anyhow, I was like, yeah. cancer? Who, who, who's this cancer dude? I said, who the fuck? I, was can I never knew cancer. 
was living a fast life. I never watched TV. I just grinded, 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 grinded. You know? And uh, I said, well, what was cancer is, you fucking with the real deal, baby. He in trouble, because I'm coming. I'm coming. See, I'm, like, I'm coming, but I'm in pain. Come on. Right. I'm but coming. you're still, that's why I said I love your mindset, <laughs> because going into it, most of the times, and, you know, I had, I had family members that died from that C word, that cancer. Yeah. So most of the times, once you hear the diagnosis and it's real, that's when you get weak. Then you're like, you you were feeling good up to the point the doctor says, hey, you have cancer. And then all of a sudden now, you feel it because it's in your mind. So I love your approach. And that's just who you were, you know, credit to your family, credit to your upbringing, yeah. credit to just who you are as a person. But you said, the, the, I, I read somewhere where you said here, the comfort was in a 500 bench press, okay? Now you're in the hospital. You said, man, I gotta go back and I gotta find my comfort. I'm gonna, yeah. I'm gonna bench press 500 pounds and the cancer is going to disappear. Yeah, yeah, that's exactly what happened, man. You know, it's, uh, you know, the, it's funny, cancer and comfort. What do they both start with? Let us see. Yep. Take that C and push it out into the C. You know what I'm saying? Let them know who the great white is right over here. I'm in that scene, I'm coming for it. You know, I'm in this hospital here, going in deeper, and you know, walking you through it. Um, you know, my life it was it, it was it was great, man, because I never had nothing. So I was when I did get things, I was so giving. I love the people. I love giving back. I, I'm always like teaching. Hey, you gotta do unto others, expect them to you. So you know, imagine Jersey Shore guys right here at the shore having fun. You know, girls are coming up. You got guys part of your crew. They may be like, oh, you know, trying to make fun or something. Like, yo, my man. It's time for you to flip spaces right now. Like, that ain't that. No, I used to call myself, they call me the real deal because I'm so real. Yeah. And I said, I said, okay, well, you're my enterprise. And, and anything less would be uncivilized. That's you know? it. I don't care if you're tall, small, fat, skinny, rich, or poor. When you're with the real deal, everyone is equal. That's for sure. So I'm, I had this mentality. My friends like, what the heck? I'm flipping like, you need to go out here and see your mind right. So I'm bringing people in. Like, I don't get out to go too far off a tangent. But me and this, per this, uh, this lifestyle I was living, I was so blessed. I had I had hundreds of people come to this hospital in New Jersey. Hundreds. I mean, the people, the nurses, the doctors, like, yo, who is up on that floor? Do we have a celebrity or what? It was a real deal. The real deal is there, baby. It, well, it was crazy. Like, I'm talking like, and boy, well, you'll hear more about this, but man, I was in the hospital. I had probably 50, 100 people coming every day. On the weekends, 100, 200 people from Texas, Miami, California, mm -hmm. Chicago. I mean, all over the place. Even cats that were overseas coming back. I mean, it was such a blessing that, I mean, I flipped the hospital inside out. It was nuts. I, I was shooting nurses with nerve guns. They were having stone saline at us. I mean, I had food being shipped in, you know, and this is my mindset. I'm dying here, fighting for my life in pain. I'm like, yo, I am not eating this shit that's in the hospital. So, yo, Joey Giuseppe, Mikey, Frankie, yo, I need you to go get some food from the good shop. So I got filet mignon coming in. I got scampi. I got, you know, fede block. I even got wine. I'm like, yo, doc, can I have a little wine? You can have a glass. Okay, let me get that big glass. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah, that's it. That big so, bottle glass. Yeah, so I'm feeding these nurses. I'm like, nurse, you got to put your food down. Let me handle this. I'm that late night Chinese. So, you know, you walk into my room, you got a disco ball flying by. You got two teams, one's on sport. I got a lounge set up for people to come in. I got a tray where they can get candy. They go up the fridge. I got protein shakes, Gatorade. I love it. I mean, this is my mentality. Yeah. And I'm like, man. And the love. And people were just, and it just made me finally click. I was like, you know what, man? I, I'm a good person. I'm good. It wasn't something like, like I tried to be. It just came out natural. And that's yes. what you do. You just got to let yourself be real. Too many people in life just, get caught up in the grayscale bullshit. It's either black or white, one way or the other, right or wrong. It's real deal or no deal. That's I, it. Yeah, yes. you know, you know I love that mindset. Been preaching this whole opposite thing forever. The light's yeah. off, it ain't on, you know what I mean? I, black or white. And I love that you sort of had this fun mentality even at the hospital, fighting for your life every day, man. At the end of the day, you made it fun. You made it who you are. And that's why cancer cannot defeat a person uh, that that's real. You already know. I it love was, that. It starts with the mindset. And you're in there. I'm like, listen, people, and, and I, they're like, yo, they're like, you know, uh, oh, you know, patient is I said, whoa, 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 patient? So you can have some patience, but I ain't no patient. I'm a that's guest. I when know. I'm a guest here, you better get my suite ready. You better get some hot ass nurses in here. You better make sure people coming down and they are comfortable because mm. my ass is not comfortable. <laughs> I'm the cancer killer. The oh, thriller in the vanilla. You feel me? I love it. I, yo, I love the attitude. I love yeah. that's the that's the mindset. 
that'll change lives right there. Because it's, it's, it's genuine and it's authentic. There's no, there's no forcing it. You, you know what? I just had a start, a start difference in what I see is if I go into someone's uh, hospital room and they're struck in with cancer and they're fighting it, they got, they're going through chemotherapy, it's dark, it's saddened, mm. it's, not, it's gloomy. It's kind of like you go in there and you're like, man, I should be depressed with you. Well, well you no way. Yeah. yeah. You know, and people coming in, you walk in, you would think that. And look, there are rooms. And I would walk by. I wasn't 11th floor. I would walk on 9th floor. I'm walking by and I'd see these rooms. You know, I mean, I'm, I was tripping. Like, I'm over here fighting. And, you know, obviously when they finally got me subdued, like, the deal with the pain, they put me on the lawn. Now, picture this. You see these movies, right? They hit them with morphine. Boom. Oh, that's when yeah, you yeah. die, right? Yeah. The lawn is 10 times stronger than morphine. They put me on the lawn. 10 times stronger than morphine. That is liquid heroin. They mm. had to put on that to deal with the most excruciating pain you could possibly go through is for dying patients, mm. you know? So I'm going through this. Now, find you real quick, funny story. Side note, I'm sitting here one night. You know, and people are coming to visit me, and I'm like, I'll be talking. I'm like, yeah, so I was over here, and it was great. <laughs> so, yeah, that's like great. We had some cheeseburgers and stuff. You see the game last night? She went, wow. Yeah. Hey, what's up, girl? Like, this is the mentality you go through. I'm like, the people start cracking up, and that's just me. And like, you know, is he, is he really? Is he, it's okay. It seems like it's him. Is it the love? I don't know. He's, he's always been that fun girl. Like, you know? Yes. Yeah. I'm going through this. And anyhow, I'm going through this, and I'm talking, and one night I'm watching TV, right? I'm just sitting there, and it had this button. You can, I had hardwired my body because of such pain, the hardwire hit this button, boom, every seven minutes. I fell asleep hitting the remote on the button, the TV, and I'm subconsciously thinking I'm hitting the button on the TV, so I'm like, bing, bing, bing. Yeah, so, wow, I'm you're pretty flooding I yourself. Up. I wake up, I'm like, hey, yo, hey, yo, hey, I don't know if I can do it, you know what I'm saying? I'm over yeah. here. This button is killing me. Yo, die. Get rid of this shit. You know what I'm saying? Yes. So that was the end of that. I said, you know what? Uh-uh. I'm taking this shit head on. I am not going to be one of these zombie walking patients. I am Love not going to be one of these painkillers. I said, I want to feel the pain. I want to feel how deep I felt the pain before. And look, and, and, I, and it was there. I said, but if I could, if I done it before, why can't I do it again? Give me this sucker. Let's go. So now they're coming in, and they need to do biopsies. They hit me the chemo. I'm getting smashed. I'm, I'm during chemotherapy. I'm crazy. I'm getting up. I'm hooking myself in the machine. I'm flipping through the hospitals now. I'm doing laps every night, doing cardio for an hour, listening to music. Boom. I'm walking by these hallways, like you was talking about. You know, people you say with the dark, the gloomy. I'm looking at these rooms, like, yo, what up? What's going on in here? Oh, how you doing, man? What's wrong with you, man? What's wrong with you? It's the, it may be Monday, maybe Tuesday, maybe Wednesday, Thursday, Friday. You ain't got no job. You obviously in the hospital. Better get your ass up. Time to get some yeah, movement. This is amazing. Oh, on, so I got these people that are moving. I said, come on, you doing cardio with me. So wow. I then built these inspirational sayings all around the hospital walls. I built this mosaic, mosaics on hospital walls. Then all of a sudden you start seeing people gradually coming out the room. Mm. They come out the room. They're just staring at this. And I'm like, yeah, that's what I'm talking about. I said, listen. I said, you may be a score in the world, but we all trying to get a nut. Let's go. You got to get up and fight, man. You oh. got to get up and fight. What are you doing? Are you living or are you existing? And look, I choose to live. If you want to exist, no. Not in my presence, man. No way. That's bad order. That's bad realm. None of that shit, man. This is all world together, man. We're going to fight. So now all these people coming out the hospital, the rooms, all of a sudden, the nurses and doctors, like, you feel this vibe. You feel the glow. The sun is shining. It may be winter. I mean, it's, it's hot as shit outside. But look, the sun is shining from inside this building, blowing out. You got several people flying up and down the hallways now. They're moving. All of a sudden, people are winning. They're fighting. They're, 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 they're getting out of the hospital early. I mean, this is some unbelievable shit. But it's the real deal. you got to understand something. And we'll come back to this, but you have to understand something. The mind and the body is a self-surviving. It's a self-healing. It's a self-living organism. It all works synergistically. So what you portray up here is only going to transition down here. Mm. You get that mind right. Everything will be all right. I love it. I, yo, free nice. dawn, baby. I love that you turned that hospital room in the best conference ever, right? The Man. best seminar ever. I should have sold, look, I should have sold tickets. That's, that's what I'm saying. 
Oh, the CNA from the 10th floor should have came down and watched. Oh, they was coming. They was I coming know. too. I Look know. It. So, man, they was coming. Look, we was going down there. We started getting ice cream, bringing it up, you know, going more deeper in the story. <laughs> you know, I, w- I would check out. You know, I come out and going in now, but walking through this journey. People, you know, I'm sitting over here, just they're, they're, people getting sad. They call me, oh, Dr. Jordan, Dr. Jordan. I said, yes, yeah, right. Dr. Jordan, man. You, got, you already got the J's and the sneakers. Hey, Dr. J right here. You know, there's a new version. So I'm going in these rooms. I'm building people up. Like, you got to fight and the mind and body. And look, and what are the praying with people, whatever. It's it, it just, it just, I'm getting their mindsets and changing. I remember one time we walked in, this girl, she was so sad. She was so sad. She could not. She was so upset. She, she was going through chemo and stuff. And she just couldn't get out of the hospital. She was really struggling. She was ready to give up. She wasn't eating or not. I said, come on. I says, I got so many blessings. that people are bringing stuff to me all the time. I'm like, how do I do all this shit, man? Yeah. I went and gave it all the way to everybody else. So, you know, walking in a room, people got plants. They got big, big balloons, cakes. They got games. I'm bringing all kinds of stuff. Um, so I'm walking in. I bring this plant. I said, listen, this is for you. I said, look, I'm going to pray with you now. I said, we're going we gonna to pray. And we're just and praying about... You know, that's just all straight religion. We're praying about like the positive mindset, you know, getting out of that comfort zone, oh, yes, yeah. focused and, and knowing what you want and going out there. Greatness lies within all of us. You gotta dig down deep, no matter where we're struggling with adversity. You gotta grab that son of that you gotta squeeze hard and you never let it go. And it was crazy, girl. She was just she was just been there for another three weeks. We got you got the mindset, you can fuck this boom. She checked out the next day. Checked out. She checked out next day because the mindset, man. That's it. The next day, I says, "Yo, where's Kim at?" She's like, "No, she she checked out. She checked out. She's she good. Checked, she She's checked. Good. Really, she checked in. She rechecked in with with life and getting that mind right. Yeah. But she checked out the hospital. Never checking out of that mindset. You got to stay in the mindset. Now to be like that. Now, you know what I'm, the real, I'm here. I'm here with Jordan Sapino, the comfort killer. Jordan is a comfort killer. Had the rare condition, cancer. The C word, comfort. The C word, cancer. Says, yo, I'm gonna box this thing like I'm Muhammad Ali. Okay, in 1965, bro, and I ain't going to Vietnam. Okay, <laughs> so you really, t- you really took it there, and that's the mindset that I love, and I love that you focused on the opposite, man. Either we live it or we dead, man. And I'm gonna get up here, and I'm gonna still do as if I'm outside of here. Cardio, that's what I'm gonna do. So now they call you the miracle man. You running through there like the motivational man, man. Yeah. You know what yeah. I mean? So now you know it, man. man. So now you putting it in, and I love that. So here, here wh- was concentric fit already established before the cancer or no 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 I, you know i've always been in health and, and wellness uh i've been working out for over 22 years i just found you know rope like uh like kind of like comfort within comfort outside of comfort to where i just could relax my mind and let my, my mind muscle mind connection be free and relieve any kind of stress if there was anything able to get in my body but yeah. i just found the comfort and the, the greatness of mechanics and how the body can change from from diet to supplementation to working yeah. out and you know, I ran gyms for 15 years in the Air Force. Did, I dealt with the physical fitness valuation with these, you know, helping the tests and everything, and organized that. But uh, again, ran gyms for 15 years, and uh, you know, I dealt with went up to the corporate uh, jobs and whatnot. But you know, side note, corporate just got tired of the corporate world trying to act as if they're a certain type of persona, and that do as I say, not as I do type of mentality. I said, no, man, we all equal. You got to coach people. You can't lead by fear. And dictate, oh, if you don't do this, you'll be fired. No, yeah. it's not me. You lead by example. If you got me by example, why am I following you for? That's it. You know what I'm saying? So, so you so you did say so so already you were in the health space. Yeah. You said, yeah. You said like this to corporate America. Yeah, all day. All, all day, day, yeah. So when did you st- when did you start your company? Well, going through, well, basically we'll rewind a little bit, going in back in the story and come right back real quick yeah, for yeah. you. You know, uh, I come out the hospital. I tell the doctors, if you don't mind, we're going there, right? No, no, no. You know what? Before you get in, because this is going to yeah. bring us right back in the story. What you said okay, here. Perfect. All right. You yeah, said, cool. You know, this, cool. this, this right here was yeah. you know, after the December, after the four months in, you went out, you beat cancer, right? Yeah. You, yep. you punched yep. it in the face. And yeah. then something happens, and you're going to get into that for me. Yeah. This sure. is what I love. You said, I woke up, I couldn't walk or talk. And had mm-hmm. lost over 50 pounds of muscle. 
And yeah. ironically, the first word I spelled when I was communicating <laughs> through an alphabet board was protein. And my family immediately knew that I was back. It was, just, yeah. it was supposed to take you a month to walk. You did it in three days. This is real. It was supposed yeah. to take you one year to fully recover. You put 50 pounds of lean muscle mass back on in six weeks. Bro, who are you? Tell me the I'm rest the, of that story. I'm the real deal. What is your story? <laughs> That's it. Come on, man. That's it. it. So going into it, man, you know, I came into the hospital. I'm struggling. The doctor's like, listen, man, the chemo ain't doing it. Your cancer's still there. You got to have, you got the rare form. My chromosomes, they never seen this before. That was a chromosome abnormality. Like, dude, we either have it, we don't. We're just so confused. They looked at all the database inside America, outside, trying to nothing, nothing. I'm unique. I know. I get it. You know, I got bald hair, beard, you know, crazy as hell. I'm unique. I'm different. <laughs> I'd rather never be nothing, nothing but who I am, you know, because I'm me, always, 100%, 100%. So I said, listen, then they said, you need a transplant, bone marrow transplant. I go see all these doctors, bone marrow transplant. I'm like, man, you know, like, hit me another biopsy. These biopsies, mind you, take figure, ready, look at this. You figure your coffee here, this is the size of a needle, this mm. big. You can imagine, this, this is my head, look, that big. They're putting these needles in there. I denying the medication, denying the pain. This thing's going right here in the back in your dermals. Mm -hmm. You're scraping the bone marrow. Boom! Mm. Yeah, screw shame pain, but look, the mind, the mind, the mind. No pain medication or nothing. I'm like, I'm in this. I'm in this to win this. No, this is not even going to affect me. Comes out. They test it. Still cancer. So cool. So I tell you what, Doc. When I got to come back in here? This is uh, about four and a half weeks. Says, okay. They says, uh, we're going to do it. We need a transplant. I says, now listen. First off, my, my uncle, he was, a, he was a colonel. He was a pilot in the Air Force, and he had a bone marrow transplant, and his body didn't accept it. And obviously, that was the opposite side, non relation towards the, the medical, but he had non Hodgkin's lymphoma cancer, and his body didn't accept it. So, immediately, my family's like all crying. Oh, my God, what are you going to do? I said, I'm going to kill They're thinking this. back. They're thinking I said, back. I'm gonna, yeah. yeah. I said, what you crying for? Look at me. I'm going to kill this son of a bitch. This mm -hmm. dude knocked on the wrong door. I'm home. I am home. And I'm locked and loaded, baby. So, I said, Listen, when I was in the hospital, I says, I see people do cross or puzzles and seeing people knit. They found their comfort to where just kind of to take away the pain. Not so getting comfortable in life, but getting the comfort to deal with the situation where they can persevere and overcome. I says, you know what? I see them happy. I see them doing well when they're doing this. They found peace. I was laying in there. I remember she was battling like three different cancers at once. Wow. She was cross her puzzles. I'm like, well, shit, this is great. And I was chatting with her. I'm like, man. She had ALL, AML. Mm. Oh, like, I'm like, you gotta be kidding me. And if I see this lady fighting like this, I'm like, it makes perfect sense. Same Italian. I'm like, I love to work out. I said, I tell you what, I told everybody in the hospital, I said, yo, if I come back in here, I'm gonna bench press 500 pounds. So I'm like, what? So yeah, five, not three, not four, five. Mm. I'm like, 500 pounds, and I'm gonna take that cancer, and I'm gonna bust my ass every day from the moment I get out of the hospital, going right back to the gym. And I'm going to push that son of a bitch out of me. That next test, there will be no cancer. Okay, Jordan. All right. So the moment I get out of the hospital, my mother wants to grab lunch. Obviously, I was neutropenic. So finally, I was able to eat like salad and fish and stuff. Because when you're neutropenic, your body's recovering. You can't have that stuff. So I'm yeah. taking my lunch. You know? I said, all right, mom. It was great. Good. But I got to get to work. So you mm -hmm. know, I'm working right now. You know, you can recover. So yeah, I'm going to the gym. That's the She got it. She understood. So I went to the gym every day. I began to transform my body, alkalize my body, you know, high vegetables and the alkaline water. And I would walk hills every day. Here you go. You already know. Yeah, you already know. Oh, and I have my boy later on with the, with the machines and whatnot. So, you got, uh, you got the machine? You know, my boy, he, he's uh, transferred his company from Florida over here. So he's bringing them all over. He has an alkaline dispensary. Yes. yes. Good stuff. Great so stuff. You put, your, put your finger in the water, you charge and laugh like a light bulb. That's it, baby. That's it. <laughs> come on, man. Come on. So, you know, I'm going through this, and uh, I says, uh, I went straight to the gym, and I would walk these hills every day. I walk for an hour on the treadmill. I walk a 12.0 increment, and I walk a 3.5 speed. No, not grabbing on, because that's going to bring it more even. Just walking, just fighting, in positive, motivational music, you know, rocking over here with a beat gene and shit, like, like I'm nuts and shit. When I'm moving, I built so much natural born testosterone in my body. Wow. It just reciprocated up through here. And I be, I became like a, like I became like 
this massive, massive ticking time bomb that is just ready to take over the world. And again, bring vengeance upon any opponent that stands before me. I mean, you I'm ready to blow, man. So I'm doing this, and what happens is four and a half weeks go by. The day before we go back in to the hospital, I said I was out the night before in New York, San Janeiro. No, I wasn't drinking. I was eating, though. You know, the canola. That's it. Feast. By the way, they ain't got no, no San Janeiro feast over here in California. I was like, come on, man. It was like a block long, not even. Anyhow, <clears throat> so I'm like, I go back home. I'm like, shoot, I got to go to the hospital tomorrow. So look, I'm tired. I'm like, well, you know what? I made this promise. I'm going to do it. So I went to the gym. I had my body come in there. Uh, another guy who was filming. I says, okay, start warming up. 225. 315, I put 315 on there, I'm pressing it, pressing it, I'm like, okay, feel good. I go to four, oh shit, that shit feel heavy, shit, seven. oh man, like, hold on a minute. I looked up, I said, yo, Jesus, you listening? <laughs> <laughs> I might need a little help on this one. Yeah. But I know I'm going to get it, so I'm going to tell you right now, you either with me or you're with me. Yeah, that's it. We're going to make this happen, one way or the other, right or wrong. Black or white, without any excuses, the way it should be. Like I said, it's real deal or no deal. Right. So we went up. I was there, did my thing. I put 400 on. Bloop. I start laughing. Wow. I start laughing. I'm like, all right, all right, it's game on. I said, let's just go 450, Fred. Bloop. Easy up. Like, I just start laughing. So you seen the video beforehand, the 500 comes. I'm just laughing. I'm like, you know what, man? I get it. I get it. I get it. Look, I'm just the messenger. I'm just the messenger. I'm here. The man upstairs working through me and show you the power of mind, the power of God. Mind said you can do anything you put before you. 500 goes on. Down. Up. I have cancer. Cancer don't have me. Mm-hmm. Real deal. Stand up. Mm-hmm. Next test. Cancer gone. Test. Say, we walk in there. Doc says, yo. I said, yo, doc, biopsy what's up. I said, tell me that cancer's gone. Mr. Sabino, I says, tell me that cancer's gone. Come on, mama, tell him, tell him. It's like, tell, tell, him, tell him the cancer's gone, doc. Tell him the cancer's gone. <laughs> I said, Mr. Sabino, the cancer's gone. I said, what's up now, baby? That's the real deal. Come oh, on, no. Yo. Yeah. Gone. 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 I said, I told you, I told you. So, you know, obviously I walk up there, like they say, like, you know, when they say, you know, Tim Grover says, you know, don't walk, when you walk back in the hospital, you don't walk with a chip on your shoulder. Yeah, I had that chip inside. I was like, uh-uh, ain't no one taking my chip. That's my chip. I earned that chip. So I'm walking through this hospital, like, all right, it's gone. So walking through this, I'm feeling good. I'm like, it's in the world. So now I'm crazy. I come checking in the hospital. I'm like, well, shit. They like, let's just make sure chemo, we do it, make sure it stays away. That's cool. So I'm like, fuck, I'm gonna flip the script now. They, they thought they knew the real deal. Oh, shit's on and popping. So I'm coming in, I got a cart now. I got a cart, a big ass cart. So yo, get my suite ready down the end of the block. I need a, I need a little <laughs> workout space. I need no roommate. I need to have people, I need to have my club going, I got my music going. I got everybody coming here. So all of a sudden I start coming out waving like everybody got the mail and shit. You know, I, I got this cart full of all these weights. I got all this food on here. I got all these activities, the game, the gun, the never gun, these. All kinds of crazy shit. And now they just know I'm coming. Every four, every every uh, four and a half weeks, here comes Mr. Sapino. Here comes the real deal. He's coming. What's up, everybody? Boom, boom, boom. It's like a party. It's like I show up like, it's a black party. They're like, what is going on? This dude shows up and it's great. So going into it, we just start changing lives, man. It was, it was, it was so real, so awesome. Just going in and meet with people and just really uh, – just watch people's lives change. Well, well, I mean, let's let's back up because then what you just said was so powerful. And you know, I got goosebumps again. That's why I'm like this. That's yeah. when it comes up and starts flaring up this goosebump because yeah. it's real. And it touched me because at the end of the day, you spoke into existence what you said you were gonna do. You put it out in the universe, you committed to it. Because at the end of the day, you said, Yeah, listen, I'm gonna go bench press 500 pounds, and when I come back. This cancer ain't there no more, right? You start right. at three at 350, at 350, it was tough. You looked up, you said the word. Now four is easy. 450 was easy. Yeah. Then you realized right then and there that you're the messenger, that the power yeah. of potential, the power of your mindset, the power is coming through you, right? Uh, 
and you accepted it right then and there. But what I love is that you never backed out on the initial commitment that you gave to the doctor. And that's the real deal right there, pal, bro. Because the things that we say to ourselves needs to actionize, right? Exactly. Needs to yep. actionize. And the universe, God, knows when you're playing or not, right? Yeah. You could have easily said, man, I'm going to stop at 200. Guess what? The cancer might still be there because yeah. you didn't follow through on what you said you were going to do. And, mm. I, and, and that, to me, is real. That's yeah. the power because we need to say things and then do what we're going to say. And that's real. You're right. Action and control. You got Action, to control. Yo, So and now you walk in there, the party's starting again with you. Yeah. Right? The, party, yeah. the party's back. The block party's back. And, <laughs> yeah. and you defeated cancer. Yeah. Yeah. I defeated cancer and I'm walking through. Now, in life. You know, everything serves a purpose. I tell everybody, yes. you know, you got to look at it to where everything you go through, you look at it and make sure you take something from it, whether it's a pro or con, uh, positive or negative. You know, you walk creating this puzzle. And the key is, is when you hang out on the wall, is it going to be a masterpiece? Is it going to be some other messed up drawing? I choose a masterpiece. Right. What happens is, you know, I'm going through this and I'm thinking I'm the badass. Now I'm like, yeah, I'm unstoppable. You can be unstoppable in the mindset, and you you, you got to make sure that you understand your purpose and not to get too overconfident. Because sometimes overconfident, we tend to fall back on certain habits that maybe not supposed to be there, or mm. you know maybe hanging with the wrong type of crowd when you should be on that rolodex. You feel me? You know. So now maybe hanging around the wrong crowd now. You know, doing the wrong things. Not the bad things, but like you know, out down the street. Uh, talking with my friends, I'm like, come on, man, go do with this guy, this guy, stuff. and you know, and it's like, okay, take this guy, he overcame all this shit, he's a huge motivational guy, rocking and stuff, and says, man, I'm still like, all right, bro, I get it. You ain't ready. You ain't ready. Wasn't ready. I wasn't ready. Four and a half months, you know, I'm back, I'm hanging out with girls, having fun, uh. drinking, I'm out drinking, having fun. I got a bigger purpose, not girls. Now I'm drinking, having fun, you know? And I'm like, okay, all right. Christmas comes around. I wasn't supposed to uh, leave the house. I'm doing all this chemo and the platelets. By now, by the last month, I stopped working out because I couldn't. It was just such a screw shit with the chemo. Just the hands yeah. are peeling. Everything tastes like cardboard. The hair is falling out. I, my lady I had met uh, a week before I had gotten sick with cancer, Mind you, she was in California, so mm -hmm. we were going back and forth. And uh, I said, uh, you know, I went out shopping. I was surprised in my family. I'm very given, obviously. And uh, I went out shopping for Christmas. I was going to surprise them. And I couldn't imagine showing up my own family's home right there in Jersey without any gifts. So I left the house. I wasn't supposed to leave. I felt good. Well, little did I know, I had zero platelets in my body. Wow. None. Not one single platelet. And that's... That's what protects you. Someone coughs on you, sneezes, touch a door handle, going through your skin. I'm the most fragile. I'm like Mr. Glass right now, not realizing. But my mindset is I'm unstoppable. I'm unstoppable. So two days after Christmas, I'm scheduled to go in of 2011. And mind you, I went in early for playlists. I knew, like, I felt at that time, like, okay, this is chemo. It's rocking. It's, it's, it's getting me. So I went in for early playlists to help my body recover quicker. It just wasn't enough. So I went in again. Two days after Christmas, I wake up that morning. I remember, I wake up, I look up, man, it's bright. It's so bright. I never noticed it was so bright. I'm like, man, it's so bright. It's going on. I get in my car. I start driving. Now, the, the infamous Wawa's out there that we don't got in California, which I'm freaking- Wawa, that's a, that's a South Jersey deal. <laughs> Come on, man. You get a sun and a meatball. You get a, 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 a Caesar wrap, a coffee, a donut, and a ding-dong all at freaking 3 a.m. <laughs> that's it. So I stop here, I get myself a liter of water, I get an energy drink, a cranberry, I'm driving, I cause all of this, I'm super thirsty. I get to the hospital, I pull up, I get platelets, all of a sudden, boom, I feel it. I'm walking, I'm getting stuck, I feel like I'm stuck in mud, I'm going slower, I'm going slower, slow. You, please, help me. First time I ever said, help me, please wow. help me. They come over to security, put me in the wheelchair, they fly me up. 
Little did I know, I went blind. How do I make it to the hospital? Look, that's up for debate. I would say it's God and in person. I had a I had a mission to go and do this, but I got to the hospital. I went blind. I, I only was seeing I was seeing blurred images. I was seeing shadows. Now, thank God, I had to make when I came out of the house was a right and a left, and just keep on going straight for like fifteen miles, and then maybe another right and a right. So I'm just cruising and just seeing shadows. I had a hundred and seven degree temperature. Wow. That's one zero seven. That's brain damage. Yeah. That's brain damage. But me and his mindset, I'm the real deal. What is your story? I'm a persevere no matter what is thrown at me. Again, I'm bringing vengeance upon any opponent. So me not knowing that I'm really going through this, and my mindset is regardless. I'm tunnel vision. I'm going down. I beat this. I rang the bell. I'm cancer free. I'm good. I get to the hospital. They fly me up there. Nurse like, oh, my gosh, Jordan, what are you doing? I told you I had to leave the hospital. They're all yelling. And she's like, oh, my gosh, I'm so sorry. Why am I yelling? Why are you going out for that? Ah! Boom. They start cutting my clothes up. She went, what? Oh, my gosh, that ICU. I ain't going to ICU. I can't breathe. I can't breathe. Boom. They put me up. Oh, no, no, I see you. I don't want to go. Because why did you three weeks before that? I got this guy. I got this guy that did all my filming. Look at my YouTube. You'll see a bunch of videos I was filming. This kid named Danny. He was very struggling throughout the kind of cancer, and uh, and he wasn't supposed to make it. And I took him underneath my wing. He was like my big little brother. And I took him underneath my wing, and I said, man, mindset, mindset, you got to focus. And he ended up living a lot longer. And nonetheless, he went home, and obviously out of the frame of my jurisdiction, he's out here dealing with the stress, allowing stress to come in, maybe eating habits come in, family bad habits coming in. And uh, he ended up back in ICU, and I, and I remember seeing him on ICU just shaking uncontrollably. And... And he didn't make it. And I remember seeing that and the tears coming down my eyes because that was my warrior. That was my man side by side. I told him, I said, we're going to beat cancer together, man. We're going to beat this together. We're going to overcome it. Nothing will stop us. And I'm watching him pass. So remember, when they told me I was going to ICU, I'm like, nah, nah, I don't go to ICU. Nah. I saw it like that. I'm like, oh, shit. I was like, oh, shit, I'm going to ICU. That's not good, man. Like, that's intensive care unit. Like, one of my friends, you go there, you fucked. Yeah. You're done. I'm going there. So now I get up there. They're freaking told me. So mind you, I got a hundred. I, I went blind. I have a hundred and seven degree temperature. Now my kidneys shut down. I have kidney failure. Now I tell you, I'm putting. I'm getting bloodline infections. I get four deadly bloodline infections. I go. I get pneumonia. I'm in here. All of a sudden, I go into septic shock. Septic shock. Look, someone tell someone septic shock. You might as well just say goodbye. Wow. Done. All of this on top of what I have, normally septic shock, you're lucky, maybe 15% chance. Out of all the complications I went through, zero. zero. I had 0% chance to live. They said, he's not going to make it. There's no way in hell he's going to make it. My mom's freaking out. My dad's not sure what to do. My brother's just stuck. My family's flipping out. They have no idea. Like, no, no, this can't be it. It can't be it. No, it's not going to happen. No. <laughs> so they put me in a reduced coma. They, they can't control it. They cannot get my temperature done. I'm sitting there. They put me into a coma. They try and try and get the temperature down. I'm crying. Remember coming. I remember people. You sleeping and, and and people are coming in like Jordan. If you can if you can uh, hear me, wiggle your toes. Wiggle your toes. I guess I wiggle my toes. Listen, I may I may have one foot in the grave, but I am don't. I have no intention. No intention of making that that my that my my home. Yeah. I'm popping out that song, bitch. Yeah. Why I am the real deal. I am the real deal. And this is my story. This is what we were falling through. This, you're walking through this journey with me. Again, in my life, it is black or white, one way or the other, right or wrong, real deal or no deal. Yeah, Jordan. So. Yeah, Jordan, before you, before you move on, because, again, when you say things, I get goosebumps and I got to touch the topic. Um, Let's do it. You didn't learn. The, uh. mis- the purpose, you didn't understand the purpose the first time. Yep, yep. Didn't understand it. You went back out. You went partying. You fought, fell back into the comfort. You didn't get it. You got, got it. it. Yep. You didn't get it. But now yep. you about to get it. Right? Yep. He's like, yo, hit him again. Hit him again. Hit he him wasn't again. ready. Give me that comfort. I had too much, too much more to offer the world. I wasn't, you know, they say in the Bronx tale, you know, wasted talent. I'm wasting my talent. It wasn't talent. I was wasting my mindset. My mind, the mindset is the most powerful tool you could possibly ever have. Yeah. I mean, for example, going to 10S Brocon, they woke up a sleeping giant. 
Yeah. I have this, I, mean, I thought, again, I'm doing good, I'm building shit, but dude, everything's more. Purpose. There's more. There's more. That's why we're having this talk. That's why I'm gonna bless millions. And my brand is gonna blow up like no one's ever, no one, they can't imagine, because they're gonna see it happen before well, they that's it. That's what the Comfort Killers is about. They counted me out. They oh, definitely wow. counted you out. Uh, you yeah. had a zero percent, man. I'm, yeah. I'm supposed to be a statistic right now. Gambling addiction, depressed, yeah. upset, stressed, Jamaican, kidnapped, shouldn't have been here, right? Yeah. Yeah. But something, something keeps tugging at us. And when we're on purpose, it becomes easy. I, I love what you said. They woke up the sleeping giant, man, because there's more, there's more to come. There's more to, to touch. You need to touch millions. And as I'm reading this, and I want you to, and I want you to finish because I love what you said when you went to ICU. Yeah. Right? I love what you said when you walked out of there. So I'm gonna <laughs> have you finish that up, man, because I think I think that's definitely powerful due to, to tie the whole story together. Yeah, yeah. So getting back into the story, you know, I'm going in, I'm, I'm in here, I'm in ICU. All of a sudden, uh, I'm in a coma. They can't get the temperature down. Uh, I'm gone. I see heaven. It's real. It's definitely real. I see my uncle. I see my grandfather. I see my friend Danny now that had passed away. I'm walking up to the gates. I see him. I'm like, Danny. He's like, hey, welcome, my brother. You know, my brother. And, like, and, I, and these are the words he, he would say. The words he told, t- said to me. I later told his family, it says, he always said that. I never heard it. But he said the welcoming words, he would always say, you know, God bless you, my brother. Welcome. You know, like, and uh, I walked up and I'm like, yo, man. But she's like, what are you doing here? I says, well, I told you, we're going to beat this cancer together. We're going to smash it, man. He's like, no, no, no. He's like, Jordan, man. He said, listen, man, I never got the opportunity. I said, like, opportunity for what? He says, I never got the opportunity. Thank you. He's like, you allowed me to be able to spend more time and appreciate that time and get out of my comfort zone and just make an impact. That small amount of time that you embraced me with my life, I just, I'm grateful. Thank you. Thank you so much. You know what? It's not your time. You got a bigger mission to do. And I'm going through this and I'm watching this and all of a sudden, I'm going down, come back. Right? I come back out of this, this coma. They had me in a coma. They pull the food and the IV, the IV from me for two weeks. No water, no IV for one week, no food for two weeks. So my body ate up everything. All the many mass that I had left in my body, I shriveled up. I'm 145 pounds. Wow. I ain't, never, I ain't been below 200 pounds, pounds since birth, I don't believe. Right, you know what I mean? right, right. So I'm, uh, you know, they wake me up. I'm looking. They, 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 they're, they're, they're trying, they're trying. They can't get, get me to kind of, my, my blood pressure to come and my, my, my levels to kind of level out. So they're having a real tough time. They're like, man, I don't know. I don't know. So finally, they, they said, let's try and uh, get them up in the middle of the night. Because they get me to come out of the cone. But they got, you know, I got pipes. Like, like you figure three feet of, of pipes and pads the size of your head that go down and blow up, open your yeah. esophagus. And things are coming down. And, you know, I'm sitting here and I wake up. All of a sudden, uh, you know, I come out of it. Wow. And then I gotta, they got to find a process to pull these pipes out and whatnot. So finally, woke up in the middle of the night and I, I, I regurgitate all these pipes that come out. And they're like, okay, he's good, but he's not out of the woods yet. You know, we're going through this thing. So, they're, you know, they're starting to kind of just gradually build you back up and move. I couldn't move. I couldn't lift my arms. I couldn't lift my legs. I had no muscle whatsoever. Every muscle in my body was gone. I still had a beard. <laughs> it was a little choppy, <laughs> you know. So, you know, they put me through the, the, the phases and, uh, I remember they coming in here and uh, they try to communicate and have these pipes still go. Well, the pipes come out now and they're trying to have me communicate. They're not, okay, so I have blood damage. Then he has a brain damage. I mean, we're not, what's going on? You know, they're, com- they're not sure. So they bring the chart. <laughs> so they, they, they bring the chart. First time the chart, they're like, well, we're going to try and communicate with you. Well, you know, this is what we're going to do. We're going we're gonna to give him a shot. <laughs> so they, well, my cousin lifts my heart, my hand up like this. Like, just point, just point, Jordy. Just point, Jordy. So I did, yeah. So I'm looking in here, I'm like, look, I'm like, just P, R, wow. O, T, E, I, N. My cousin looks at my, looks at my family says, and then just tears, the tears come down. They're like, he's good, he's fine, he wants protein, he's good. Give him the plug, Jordan, it's over here. They give him the protein, it's the fluid right here. I call it camel juice, because on the military, the camel pack, a little tube and chill, like, yeah, yeah. camel juice. Yeah. So, I'm going through this. So all of a sudden I come out and uh, you know, I'm battling. I come out 
and they go through the process for the different floors where I turn, you know, it can take you a while to walk and whatnot. And uh, I start walking along. As I'm going, I'm going fast. Like, oh, you gotta slow down. Your blood, I'm about to explode. You know, my yeah. heart rate is flying. So, and so again, it's supposed to take me a month to, to uh, and I get deeper, deeper another time. I, I, I get, uh, so it's taking me a month to walk. It takes me uh, within three days. Like, yo, slow down, slow down. Don't let them see you moving so fast, you know? Wow. Mind you, again, now, I had done all this work. I had come to the hospital. I had no health insurance. I'm rocked with bills. I've done all this work. I've made a huge impact on Cooper University Hospital, Cannes, New Jersey. They're like, my God, the state comes in. They're seeing this, what I've done. They've seen the journey. They've seen the hundreds of people travel and come to see me. Like, we got to help this guy. Mm. They jumps in. They held me. Yo, they saw on us, Mr. Sapino. You know, the, the impact that I had made, they'd never seen before. Never seen. So it was a blessing and indebted to them for, the, for all the great doctors and great nurses and just the great support. The state over there was great. Uh, but I was just being me. I was just being me the whole time. They'd say, you know, we even go over and say, like, hey, you know, sometimes Clark Kent playing Superman, Bruce, Bruce Wayne playing Batman, Bruce Banner playing the Hulk. No, no, Dude. they're playing that part when they're home. I was the Hulk the whole damn time. Yeah. I was Batman the whole damn time. I was Superman the whole damn time. I was the real deal the whole damn time. So from, from day I, one. Huh? No, I said from day one. You like, you, bro, Jordan, 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 Jordan. You, you ready for it, right? You ready the for goosebumps, it? The goosebumps, man. Like they're real. That's how I know things are resonating with me. When you said you went to heaven, boom. Yeah. It was, it was real. It was real for me because you know it's, it's a spiritual thing, and 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 as humans, we're spiritually connected. You know mm -hmm. what I mean? You're. I don't mm -hmm. care if you're in California or Malaysia. I'm mm -hmm. able to connect with you and there's a spiritual connection. So when I get the goosebumps, it's the real deal. You know, yeah. you're going to have me run around saying that now. Yeah. So, no, you already know. Hey, hey, anything less will be uncivilized. Come on, civilized, guys. You see what I'm saying? And as comfort killers, this is what it's all about. You know, on a daily basis, what are you doing to change this so you can change everything else? Exactly. exactly. You know what I mean? Like your story is so powerful. You are a warrior, a champion at life. And it's because you, because all the things you've done, even while you were stricken, even when we counted you out and you became a statistic, look at, it, the, look at the beginning when you said, man, I don't even want to call the ambulance, it's 15 Gs, much less go to the hospital. And towards the end, full circle, don't worry about it, man. You made so much of an impact. We never see nobody do this ever. It's written off. It's written off. Yeah, That's powerful man. Powerful, a blessing, man. Definitely a blessing, you know. And and, uh, and again, everything's serving a purpose. We not right. not many people understand it, but it falls into it. You know, and it closes them with the topic. You know, me coming out. Uh, they come out the hospital. You know, obviously, uh, and I went, going, went to my family's house first, to my house. So everyone's like, "Yo, how did you put on all that weight? Come on, man. You never had a good mama who know how to cook. Shit, what's wrong with you? I mean, that's so, for lay mignon, baby. That pasta." Uh, no, that's a, that, look, that's a Ukrainian little short, little uh, overweight woman, the most beautiful, unbelievable, adoring mother ever. And uh, waking up at 2 o'clock in the morning and the night, hey, Ma, can I get some chicken cutlets? Yeah. At 4 o'clock, can I get some pancakes? Like, so I'm eating, eating, like, yo, I'm hungry. I have been this massive man my whole life. I am starving. So I'm eating and eating and eating. And again, I'm the doctors. They're like, you know, they wanted me to, uh, I was supposed to go back to the gym. I think it was supposed to be like months. And I was back in the gym, I think, within shit. I started walking, and I was moving around. I was hard for me to stand in the shower. I think, honestly, I think I'm back to the gym, I think, within, I had been a couple of weeks. I'm walking yeah. in. I'm a fraction of myself. And people don't even recognize me. Yeah. They don't recognize me. I think, I, I know me. I look at the mirror like, well, fuck, I'm a little, I'm a little different. I look a little different. I'm still me. Yeah. I'm walking, people walk by, and I'm like, hey. They just look at me like, what the fuck are you? So... I rebound, I build back up, I put 50 pounds back on, I'm back. I, I said, okay, it's time to go back in. I'm going to show these people exactly one more time, just so they know, just in case the ones that they missed this beautiful journey I've been on, and kids, I'm, we're killing comfort, I says, I walk in the ICU, I go, I go to this bakery. Ain't nobody behind there in the grocery store. All right, well, shit, I'm going to go over here, right? So I go, I grab a little thing, I start making my own cake. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, yeah. 
So I put there, like I put like, my thing was I can survive. I'm a cancer, cancer killer. So I go make this big cake. I get all these gifts and stuff. I come in here, got my cart. <laughs> I'm checking in. I'm coming in. They're like, what the heck? He's back. And I'm like, oh my God. I, I start with the ninth floor, going back up. I go in these rooms. I'm sharing stuff, blessing people, giving out gifts and giving back and getting everybody motivated. You better get up and you got to fight. You got to dig deep. You are on the real deal. You got to share your story. This is your journey. There is no pedal off the metal. You got to go full speed ahead. There is no beast mode. It is beast all the damn time. I made my way up to ICU. I was looking around. I'm looking. I'm seeing flashbacks of what I went through. I'm seeing a room where I see my friend pass away. I see oh. families. I see families grieving and going. And I walk into ICU. And I, and, and I said, I, hey, I'm here, I'm, here to, uh, I'm here to do my job. And she says, excuse me, sir. Wait, who are you? I says, I am the real deal. What is your story? Boom! Boom! And you got to understand the Boom. real deal, the meaning behind the slogan. If you do not understand it, I highly suggest that you learn it, you love it, and then you live it. Mm. Take a situation in life where you are struck with adversity. You are struck with adversity so bad. You utilize it as a tool to persevere and you overcome. And then you proclaim, I am the real deal. What is your story? That's Michael, it. Boom. I love it. Hey, hey, I got Jordan Sapino with me. We have just went through his entire, I mean, it, it, it'll make you cry. It'll make you believe. It'll give you goosebumps like it gave me. It'll let you learn that there's more to life. There's a mission. Everything happens for a reason. And Jordan, we're going to do part two with you about your business. And these folks are going to definitely want, they're going to want more because they love your story because you yeah. are the real deal, sir. You are a comfort killer. All day. All day. Inspiration. You remember when you just said, yo, you went to uh, GrowthCon and it, 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 it awakened the giant? Well, you done awakened the beast. <laughs> Come on now. That's it. That's it bro. So I, I want I want to thank you first of all for sharing your story with our team and being real intricate and detailed with it. I love it. Time doesn't matter. It's not of the essence, man. When we're dealing with humans, spirituality and connection is of the essence. And who will hear this and who will take that and go defeat some adversity that they have in their life right now? Whether it's a failing marriage, whether it's addiction freaking gambling, whether it's Come drugs, on. whether you're not, you haven't spoken to your family years over nothing, bro. Whether you have failed so many times, your mother kicked you out, your daddy don't mm. love you, you've been mm. kicked out. It doesn't matter mm. whether you're going through cancer right now, whether you're battling with rheumatoid or, or MS. Woo! It doesn't matter. You have, you have definitely awakened the soul power, the human potential, the mindset power in us because we're animals and we're we're gonna kill it, baby. Ah, <laughs> that's what I'm talking about. Shit. That's it, man. Where can anybody, you... you can find anybody, and they don't feel like they got it. You just make sure they give Jordan Sapino. I'm the one and only in the entire world, Jordan Sapino. You follow me on every social media. That's it. I'll show you how I killed cancer through lifting weights. That's I, I love that. And when we get into the second part, guys, ladies and gentlemen, come for killers. Definitely listen out. Stay tuned. Drop on the mailing list for part two of this, where we get into concentricsfit.com. We get into that business side after the overcoming the dragon, the quest, the quest of big baby boy here in California. Listen, I am Stacy A. Cross. And there is no E in my name. Until next time, comfort killer.